We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Can you give me a key? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. With a peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
first lesson is taken from Acts chapter 9. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Jerusalem, Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he was praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Please join me in reading Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks and holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I was here, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Second lesson comes from Revelation chapter 5. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth, in the sea, and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, 
be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Here ends this reading. follows in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together with Simon <laughs> Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, two others of his disciples, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat but the night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the night net to the right side of the boat, you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, is it the Lord? When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go to wherever you wish. But when you grow up, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. springtime, as we know, are a time for rebirth and renewal. Flowers are especially a joy this time of year, unless you're suffering from allergies. About seven weeks ago during the Lenten season, I attempted to rescue one of my cherished plants that had shriveled up and dried out. I desperately wanted to save it because I knew the beauty of the flower, one of God's glorious wonders. As the plant worked its way through the dormant and dry lifeless cycle, it reminded me of the dark days of Lent and how Jesus suffered and died for us and how we're changed and transformed through Christ's death and resurrection. As I gave the plant special attention, it wasn't long 
before I began to see a change. Soon a small green sprout appeared. As it began to grow taller and taller, that's when I noticed something different. As the plant grew, it began to lean toward the sunlight, craving the light of the Creator. Then during Holy Week, three blooms appeared, and by Easter Monday, two of the buds unfolded. It reminded me of Easter and the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as three blooms opened into large pink lilies. I saw the miracle of Easter in that life cycle, as the plant was transformed from a dead, hopeless stem into a tall green plant that produced three lovely pink lilies. It reminded me of the scripture in Luke, consider the lilies of the field, and how God watches over all of creation. When plants receive nourishment, they begin to recover and bloom. So it's the same for us. When God nourishes us, we too can grow and sprout and blossom with energy and enthusiasm for Jesus as we work together as the body of Christ to help others. So nourishment, abundance, and mission seem to be the three themes of the gospel lesson today as Jesus makes his third appearance before the disciples. It's filled with the familiar craft of fishing, the casting of nets, and the mission, of course, of loving one another as Christ first loved us. Now consider what the disciples must have been going through. They lost their teacher. Even though they experienced the resurrection, there probably was a lot of confusion as they tried to process all this information. They experienced the trauma of his death, the glory of his resurrection. But Jesus was not among them. Their lives were uprooted. They left their families and joined Jesus as they followed his ministry. So what do they do now? Go home? Well, they decided to go fishing. It's a human trait. Think about it. Whenever you're stressed or overwhelmed or grieving, you try to maintain some sort of normalcy by doing the routine things in your normal life. Maybe cleaning the house, working in the garden, cutting grass or chopping wood. Perhaps the disciples were doing the same. As I read further about the disciples fishing at the Sea of Tiberias, I couldn't help but wonder this. Did they fish there just to catch the fish to find some normalcy? Or did they make a special effort to go there because they wanted to remember one of the great miracles that they had witnessed that Jesus had performed. If you remember in John chapter 6, Jesus took two fishes, fish, and five loaves of bread, and fed a crowd of 5,000 people. That miracle occurred by the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus that day provided an abundance of nourishment for those 5,000 people with plenty left over. He physically fed them with fish and bread, and he also fed them spiritually with his teachings. So here we are at daybreak. Jesus makes his third appearance to his disciples, but they don't recognize him. He's already cooking fish over a fire and preparing breakfast for them as they come ashore. They fished all nights, and as we heard, their nets were empty. And he calls them children, and he directs them to cast their nets to find fish. Soon the net was so full, scripture says they had to haul it in. It was the disciple that Jesus loved that said it is the Lord. Who else could do such a miracle? One commentary says this about the phrase to haul in. It has a special meaning, quote, it's a verb that John uses to describe God's agency in the calling of people to faith linking the cross with the salvation, bringing people to Christ. In John 6, 44, Jesus says, No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. There it is, the hope of the resurrection. Second, the disciples are having fish and bread and breakfast, not just with Jesus, but the risen Christ, the Son of God. Jesus already was preparing breakfast, cooking fish over a coal fire. 
preparing that abundance for feeding his disciples to meet their daily needs. But what could he possibly be preparing them for? Jesus gives an abundance of nourishment to his disciples for their physical bodies, but there's more to it. Perhaps the abundance of nourishment can be the strength and encouragement Jesus is giving them to carry on his ministry and to preach the gospel. Could the abundance of fish caught in this lesson be a symbol of how many lives the disciples would bring to Jesus? And that unbroken net that Peter hauls in, could it mean all of the lives that Jesus brings to remain with God safe and sound forever? Another interesting detail on this lesson is when Jesus asks for the disciples to bring him fish they caught to eat for breakfast. I marveled at the sentence as Simon Peter hauled in the fish. Then a few sentences later, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? He tells them to feed the lambs, tend my sheep. That's the mission. With direction to his disciples, Jesus confirms to carry on his ministry, to preach the gospel and to bring people to Christ. Jesus said in John 15, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. This was a special meal they were having with the risen Christ. They spent many meals with Jesus as disciples, but this meal was special. Perhaps the fact that they were breaking bread and eating fish with the risen Christ was a symbolism, perhaps to remind us of Holy Communion. For us today, we drink the bread and wine with the risen Christ, and it's here we find Christ is present. By grace through faith, we're forgiven of our sins, renewed and transformed. It's here we're reminded of how Christ abundantly gave his life for us so that we too will have the hope of the resurrection. Through Holy Communion, God nourishes us and cares for us. The risen Christ is also among us every day as he nourishes our needs. He prepares us and gives us what we need in abundance to get through the day or to carry on the work of the church. It may be an abundance of enthusiasm, love for one another, forgiveness, comfort and grief, or other gifts that we can help others in the community. One commentary says that, quote, Jesus is the source of life for all disciples, unquote. And that means you and me. And for those who have experienced illness and grief, the risen Christ is present with us every single day giving us the abundance of grace, strength, and faith to get through those moments that we can't bear. He counts our tears, and he knows our anxieties. Jesus now, as he called his disciples, is calling us. Jesus says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Jesus is calling us to be fishers of people. We may not be successful at everything we try to do, but even if we fail at a goal, God will still continue to nourish us in abundance, sustain us as he calls us children, and says to us that we are safely tucked away in God's eternal net. So like the lilies of the field, we need to be fed and nourished by the risen Christ. Peter, 1 Peter 4 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to help others as faithful stewards of God's gift of grace. We all have gifts that God gave us. We can do many things in Christ who strengthens us. Remember, God will never give up on us because he loves us so, so very much. We're God's creation. God's grace and love are available to nurture each one of us so we can help move from the stages of hopelessness and give hope to others in their lives to blossom for Jesus. As we're nourished by Christ, we too will feel and begin to feel that we crave the light, the light of Jesus, who is the light of the world. That's how we grow. 
Soon we too, like the lilies, will sprout, grow, and blossom. We too will be fishers of people. So Jesus is calling you and me, sending us into the world to be fishers of people. Will you answer his call? Amen. God, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along the coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help. Turn their mourning into dancing. Clothe them with joy and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. Be with those who are in the final stages of life. Those who need your prayers for healing, those hospitalized, those shut-ins, and all who could not be here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead your church, O Lord. Lead us to find the way. Send us out into the world so that we may be your eyes, arms, hands, and feet to help others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers. Renew us in your life, giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. You may share the peace with one another. continue now with our offering. It is in the back of the church, but uh, we will continue with uh, responding to the offertory response found on page 66 in your hymnal, Let the Vineyards. Recited together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
I just pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had broke it and given thanks, he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he given thanks for all to drink, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. So now we pray your Holy Spirit, O God, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to praise you in your glory and receive your inheritance with all the saints. This we ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can come forward to the rail for communion. You can come forward uh, for communion, and if you would like to light a candle in memory of someone or for a certain prayer, please feel free to do so. Stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty Father, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 